do they teach your children and my children about all the colonial you know slavery and and persecution of the african of the asian do they teach that to the children you know we we civilize these these people what they don't realize is in africa people were already very civilized very eloquent very educated but you don't learn about these things many black people many asian people don't know their own history because the historians that write the history they write it with their own tinted spectacles of what they want to portray right the one that created me the one that created this universe from nothing has the right over me to tell me what to do yeah but you said it's a necessary existence no no but if i say necessary existence that has certain uh, definitions and meanings right if i say necessary existence by necessity it means that it didn't have a beginning it, it necessarily exists well, it you doesn't you're in a necessary existence i'm a necessary existence well not really no, of course not. If my of course we are. parents didn't get together, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> but the, the, the beauty of Revelation is that it's perfectly recorded history. It's not the people adding to the story, Chinese whispers, right? I don't know if that's offensive to say these days because everything's offensive now. But I didn't mean it as a slur, please forgive me. Chinese people, I love Chinese food. What I'm trying to it's say term, to you, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we know how history works. Look, British history. Do they teach your children and my children about all the colonial, you know, slavery and, and persecution of the African, of the Asian? Do they teach that to the children? People grow up with rose tinted spectacles. Oh, the great British empire. We built railways and we, you know, we, we civilized these, these people. What they don't realize is in Africa, People were already very civilized, very eloquent, very educated, very rich. And what they did was they destroyed those things. But you don't learn about these things. Many black people, many Asian people don't know their own history. Because the historians that write the history, they write it with their own tinted spectacles of what they want to portray, right? So history is a very difficult thing in, in most cases, I believe, to be certain about. It's always a balance of probability, right? But when it comes to God, when it comes to Allah, for me, there's no balance of probability anymore. If Allah said it, it happened. If Allah said it, this is what happened, it must have happened. Regardless of what some historian has written. I can't accept that. Well, who, but the, thing, the reason why... Because we, were, we weren't born to be sheep. We've got our own thoughts and we have to question. Yeah? I accept that. I accept that. But you know what? I am a sheep when Allah tells me to do something. I'll be a sheep. When Allah tells me, when Allah tells me that you know what, you need to pray five times a day, I will bow I will bow and I will pray. And I don't care whether I'm just following it because God told me to. I don't care. For me, that's the best thing I can do. Why? Because the one that created me, the one that sustained me. The one that created this universe from nothing has the right over me to tell me what to do. You know what I believe? And you know what it is, George? You know what it is, George? Just like your child, five-year-old, tells you, I'm not going to pick up my shoes, Dad. You're going to say, you make sure you pick up your shoes, otherwise there's going to be consequences. Why do you do that? Because you hate your child? Because you don't love your child? No. Because you know that you have that authority over your child and what you're telling your child to do, even though your child doesn't understand it, is good for him or her. The authority, I have right? no authority over my children. Over right. my children it teaches them discipline. Yeah, I will talk to them. It teaches them to abide by talk, rules. I will, I will talk to my right. children and, and try and guide them the right way. Of course. I, I've got no authority over them. Okay. Because they've got their own minds. Of course, but they have then, to think for themselves. Would you not want them to conform to discipline, to learn that authority is important, that somebody that's higher than you, you have to sometimes listen to them. So, for example, you can't drive at 70 miles an hour down Park yeah, Lane, then, right? Then you don't move forward. In sorry? Life. Then you don't move forward in life, do you? You sorry? Then you don't move forward well, in life. Let me ask you a question. Do you drive? Yeah. Okay. In a 20 mile an hour zone, would you drive at 100 miles an hour? No. Why not? Well, that is that is the law. Okay, yeah. and who tells you that? The government. Yeah, the government. And if yeah. you don't listen to that law, what happens? 
there's consequences. Yes, back to the river finals. Right. Yeah. So we we live by rules and regulations all the time. There's many things I can't say. I'd get arrested. There's many things you can't say. You'd get arrested. Yeah, these, now, are, man, these are man's laws. Right? Man's laws, right? Man's laws. But you still respect them. Because you have to. You have to. You have to. You have to. That doesn't mean you want to. Uh, uh, uh. That doesn't mean you want Fine. to. Fine. Even if you even if you don't want to, you have to, right? Yeah. Now, the authority of your creator that created this universe, created those men that created those laws, sustained you every breath you took from the, from the point that you came out of your mother's womb was gifted to you by that creator. Yes? Yeah, well, that's our concept. That's what we believe as Muslims, as believers, right? I now, believe, now point, I, I, I now, believe. Let I me believe, just finish though. I believe that good, good teachings are passed down the generations, yeah? Because people have learned from their mistakes. So they pass the correct ways of doing certain things. But George, I'm referring yeah. to your point about using your mind and not being sheep. I'm still yeah. talking about that issue. Yeah. So what I'm telling you is, and the Quran says this very beautifully, it covers this topic beautifully. It says you can either shackle yourself to a hundred masters or you shackle yourself to one. Everyone is shackled. It's just that master thing. Everyone Someone's is shackled. Above you. George, the, you the shoes have, you, you should, wear, you George, have the shoes you. you wear, the underpants you, you buy, you yeah? The so underpants, you know what? This is, the, this is how shackled we are. You know, if you see a fellow brother wearing Y fronts, yes? You'll take the mick out of him. Man, people used to wear that underwear in the 60s. What are you doing with that, yes? Even the chuddies you wear, the, sh the, the underwear you wear, you're shackled by the fashion of society. It tells you what's appropriate. And you're happy to conform to that, bow to that, worship that. Allah says, connect yourself to the one and shackle yourself to the one, or you shackle yourself to a hundred masters. What you wear, what you eat, what you think, what, how you behave, everything is shackled, whether you like it or you don't. So in Islam, what we say is that we are proud to be the slave of Allah, to be shackled to the Creator. Not shackled to the creation, because everyone is shackled. You know, a few years ago, I was driving down Knightsbridge. There's a very posh hotel there. Uh, or the, uh, something Oriental, I forget the name now. Terrible with names. Mandarin, Mandarin Oriental. Very nice hotel. Celine Dion, Celine Dion was singing in the park here. Same president place. Yeah. yeah. Celine Dion was singing in the park. After the event, she went to the hotel. The traffic was slow. There were like 150, 200 people in the middle of the road. And I was thinking, what the hell is happening here? What's this commotion? And they were all looking into the hotel because Celine Dion was somewhere in the foyer. Yes. Yeah. And they were all singing her song smiling, happy, looking at her, to just get a reaction from her. Maybe she looked back and give them a little wave. Oh, Celine Dion gave me a little wave. Wallahi, that day I thought, this is worship. This is worship. They shackle themselves to the singers, to the comedians, to the jokers, to the money. And Alhamdulillah for Islam. Alhamd all praise be to Allah for Islam that we shackle ourselves to the Creator. We don't shackle ourselves to a singer or a pop star or the Kardashians because she had some implants put in somewhere so she looks, you know, amazing or whatever. Yes? She places a shampoo and she does a little interview. The shampoo sells out. Shackled. You're tired, you're shackled because she, there was a shampoo in the back. You go and buy the shampoo. Sold out. We don't shackle ourselves to these things, alhamdulillah. I'm not saying that we're immune to it, because look, I chose, I had this hat, I've got these clothes. I'm not saying I'm immune to it. But we shackle ourselves when it comes to connecting, to adhering to, to loving the most, to caring the most, to being the most obedient to, to the one that created us. This is the message of Islam. But my, my brother, George, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter ultimately what you or I think. There is an ultimate reality of whether God exists or he doesn't exist. There is an ultimate reality of whether God has communicated with you and me or he hasn't communicated with you and me. This is the ultimate reality. There's no other reality. And I'm saying to you that there are very good reasons 
rational reasons to believe in a creator who created everything. And there are very rational and reasonable reasons, way beyond any uh, you know, probabilistic argument that someone might apply that this Quran is from that creator. And all I'm telling you, George, is this. Study these two concepts. If you want to ask me why do I believe in this, I'll, I'll be happy to tell you, right? Study them. I'll be studying them. If and you, if, if you, you accept them. If you study the Egyptian... I have no problem. The Egyptian history as well. No problem. Yeah. No I problem. Have, especially at, at Markham. No problem. Yeah. I have no issue, no, no issue studying history. No, no issue whatsoever. Because I'll tell you why. Once I verify that the Quran is from Allah, I now have the yardstick to measure everything else by. So anything that contradicts the Quran, I will reject it. Why? Because I have a perfect ruler, a perfect yardstick to measure everything by. Why? Because I've confirmed through investigation, uh, through contemplation, that this is indeed the book of Allah. So, free thought, there's, there's, there's no meaning to it. No, of course. Look, when you say free thought, okay, if you say free thought about what I want to have for breakfast, no, yeah, no, no, I'll no. choose, yeah? No, I mean, in terms of what you believe. Okay, but look. Uh, what are you going to question? Okay, but listen. Yeah. Once you've found the truth, yeah. is it sensible to reject it and just claim free thought? Or at that stage, should you say, oh, alhamdulillah, I found the reality? Shouldn't you do that? Or should you remain perpetually open-minded to any possibility, even after you've confirmed something to be true? Yes, you have to be. You have to, you have to, your mind has to be open. You can't close your mind. Okay, so let me ask you a question then. Yeah. Uh, if you take arsenic, you die. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to take arsenic hoping that maybe, you know, it might not kill me? Maybe somebody might discover something in the future? No, you've confirmed a fact. That's you've confirmed right. the reality that this is harmful. Yeah. You're not going to do it, right? Yeah. You're not going to jump off a building. Why? Because everyone you've seen jump off a building dies, yes? Especially if it's like over 10 or 15 floors, right? There might be one case, now somebody might point out on YouTube that, oh, there was this one case where a woman fell out of an aeroplane. She did actually, uh, 30,000 feet or whatever. She did survive actually, but that's a very rare, right, yeah. She fell through the trees. Okay. Now, however, I'm not going to do, why am I not going to do that? Because I know self-preservation, I have knowledge that's confirmed something is harmful, I'm not going to do it. Now, if I confirm something is beneficial, for example, uh, you know, um, olive oil is more beneficial than having animal fat, for example. I'm going to continue having olive oil. I'm not going to just say, well, you know what, I might just have some animal fat now and again because it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll have olive oil if I can have olive oil, right? If vitamin C is good for me, I'm going to make sure I eat fruits with vitamin C, right? Why? Because I've confirmed something as a reality and I'm going to then do that, right? If I confirm God exists for me, for my reason, if I confirm that this Quran is from God, why am I going to listen to anybody else when they tell me something that's contradictory to my beliefs, which are confirmed through reason? Why am I going to do that? So if Allah says I'm one and the Christian says to me, no, 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 God is three in one, I'm going to reject that. Why? Because Allah says I'm uniquely one without partners. Worshipping anything other than me. It's hard, it's, hard, it's hard for me to believe that concept. Really well, hard. you haven't studied it, that's why. Um, I have read parts of it. No, no, but you haven't studied the, you haven't studied why the Quran is a miracle. I'll give you some resources. There's a very good uh, article, um, about a 75 minute read on Sapiens Institute. It goes through the shortest chapter of the Quran, Al Kawthar. It's a very short chapter. It's Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I start in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Inna atayna kal kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shaniya kahuwal abatar. This is the shortest chapter of the Quran. It goes through why the Quran is a miracle and it just concentrates on these three verses. And it goes through all the reasons. When the Quran was revealed, even the enemies of Islam, they knew that this was not the words of Muhammad. They knew and they accepted these are not the words of any man or any spirit. They said this, these words are something of magic. They're outside the capacity 
of human uh, uh, ability. Now, I want you to study why they believe that. In the Quran talks about prophecies, things to come. Yet it gets nothing wrong. Quran talks about things of nature that were never known. And it never makes a mistake. The Quran talks about history that was lost, completely lost. The language was lost. Hieroglyphics or whatever language. Only when the Rosetta stones were found and what have you, that they found the old meanings of things. The Greeks, the Greeks took over. And it got the that Greeks, all right. The Greeks took over the whole of Egypt. The of whole, course they did. The Egypt literacy, maths. Yes, the whole lot. but a lot, of that, a lot of that civilization was lost. The oldest, oldest text of Aristotle and Plato are in Arabic. The original language was lost. The, the texts were lost. Aristotle and Plato. Aristotle and Plato, the oldest, la, oldest text of their sayings and everything is in Arabic. Why? Because, it, and it's, this is not, I'm not saying this is a miracle of Islam or whatever, I'm just saying studied, that's how they, history... They, they studied in Egypt. Who did? Most, 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 most of the, the Greek... Um, yeah, anyway, we're, we're sort of moving away from the topic. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, from, what I'm trying to say to you... A lot of them studied in Egypt. Yeah. But George, what I'm trying to say to so you... They learned what they learned from Egypt. George, they may have done, they may not have done. It's irrelevant to what we're talking about. Because what I'm trying it's, to say... It's very, it's no, I'll tell you, George. It's very I'll tell you why it's irrelevant. Because it doesn't change the reality of whether God exists. It doesn't change the reality of whether the Quran is from God. Those two realities, if, inshallah, you were to confirm them, and you found that actually, you know what? This Quran appears to be as claimed to be from the Creator. Would you at least at that point accept it to be from the Creator and accept Islam? If you if you found that this was from it's, God, it's, it's telling me to be a slave to someone above me, which I'm not prepared to do because I want to be able to think for myself. Okay, but that's your choice. But remember, every choice has a consequence. And Allah, Allah tells you the consequence of that choice. As Allah says on the Day of Judgment, two people will have a very difficult time. They will go to hell. We don't uh, sugarcoat our religion. I'm telling you, to, look, I'm telling you from my perspective. You may accept it or, de or deny it. One is the one who lives in Rafla, carefree. Doesn't care about the truth. Happy with his own life, happy with her own life. They don't want to be told what to do. And they don't want even want to know if God exists or is true or Islam is true. They don't care. Allah says hellfire. The other one is the one who accepts it to be true and does what's called kufr. He conceals the truth, hides the truth, denies the truth. Hellfire. Yeah, but who's hiding the truth? I'm just saying, these are the two types of people. Yeah. There, are, there are people who believe Islam is true. There were people at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, one of his arch enemies was asked, Abu Lahab, that these words of Muhammad, where is he getting them? He says they're from God. They're from God. And do you think he's a prophet? Yeah, I believe he's a prophet of God. He said, why won't you accept him? He's because he comes from a different tribe. And if I accept him, I'd have to submit to him. And our tribe, we are, we are from this tribe and he's from that. Tribe. So they stopped him from accepting it. Me, there are lots of people who ex don't me, accept it. The two, the true two concepts of religion, where they originally, originally, originally started from, is denied. Then I can't, I can't comprehend what you're saying. Could you be wrong? Because you, you deny, you deny the true concepts of their religion in the first. Place Could you be wrong? By saying, well, it didn't start from there. Could you be wrong? Yeah? Could you be wrong? Could that history be recorded incorrectly? The history has been sort of like. It's been sort of like taken and, I don't know, it's been... George. It's been destroyed. George. Practically George, destroyed. George, yeah. that history, could it, be wrong, could it be wrongly recorded? History can be, and it, is, it has been wrongly okay. recorded. Okay, okay. Can God, truth, be, can, truth, can, God, can God be wrong? Can God be wrong? Who is God? No, right. We all know what the concept of God is. Yeah, but who's God? Too? No, we, God is the creator. We don't have an image of God. We don't have a statue of God. Uh, God is beyond our imagination Wait, or comprehension. Nothing starts from nothing? We believe only God brings things in from nothing, yes. But God himself... Only God. Only God is the necessary existence that underpins all other things that are created. Because you have to have a necessary existence. Whether you say it's uh, 
God or you say it's something else? There has to be something because something can never come out of nothing. So there always has to be something. Okay, well, if, if God is there, yes. well, something must have created God. No, because by necessity... How can God come out of nothing? Uh, no, God didn't come out of nothing. God always existed. Always existed. Because by necessity... But you just said that. It's no, I think, nece necessity. George, think about what I'm saying. By necessity... There has to always be something by necessity. Yes. Right. Yes. So now the difference is that we can have a discussion on what this necessary existence must be. Now it can it, it has to have a will. I'll tell you why it has to have a will, George. Because this universe started 13.8 billion years ago. If this necessary existence existed eternally in the past and it was non-conscious then it already had the properties to bring this universe into existence. And every yeah, possible who, who, existence... Who brought that consciousness into existence in the first place? Well, it, it had to already, already exist. It had to, by necessity. Yeah, but you're saying nothing can be made out of nothing. Yeah. No, I'm saying exactly. I'm saying nothing so can... God, God could, not, could, not, could not be made out of nothing. I'm not saying God was made, you see, that's the point. Yeah, or, or created. Or okay. Entity, let me let me let me let me ask you a question. Does there always have to be something in existence, a necessary something, from which everything else must come? It's a baffling question which man has man has not answered. You don't need to. You don't you think about it very hard. Religion, religion okay. Can, can something come from nothing? In my thoughts, no. I would say most people's thoughts, if not everyone's thoughts. If you have an absence of anything, an absence of everything, you can't have something coming into existence. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. So now, by necessity, there has to be something that has always existed. We can argue about what that thing is, but there has to be something. Agreed? No. no. What other option do you have, George? It's a simple fact is how can you get God, the creator. Forget God for um, the time being. Don't talk about God. Okay. Well, all right, all right. Necessary right. existence. Right. This right. necessary right. existence. Right. Necessary existence. Does there have to be a necessary right. existence? Right. A necessary existence. Of must something. Have, must have created. Forget what it created or it didn't right. create. Let's just deal with a necessary existence by definition. It doesn't, it doesn't Does there have to always be something? Of course. Yes. Yeah, okay. So therefore you accept that there has to be a necessary existence. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm, trying to say. Well, I'm asking you now. Existence. I'm asking you now. Could not have been necessary. I, I'm Ex that necessary existence could not have been there without another necessary existence. No, because then it's not necessary. The whole point of it being right. necessary, because if it's right. necessary, it can't be any other way. Well, so it can't come from something else right. because it's necessary. No. So that necessary existence is just existing. No, it has yeah. always pre-eternal, post-eternal existed. Yes, had no beginning. George, the rational conclusion to something always existing, the rational conclusion is this necessary existence. There's no way you're getting out of it. Of course there is. There isn't, because it has to be something always that existed. All right, if this something has always existed, yes. okay, it must have been something else before. No, not necessarily. To be, to be there. No, not necessarily. Because, because it had to be created. I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you why that can't happen. I'll tell you why that can't happen. Because you can't have an infinite series of necessary existence or existences because you can never traverse an infinite series of events. So you and me talking today means that we had to have a finite past. It could not have been an infinite past because you can never traverse an infinite number of steps. So it had to be finite. And we know that the universe came into existence 13.8 billion years ago. What, Big Bang? Yeah, we, that's what we believe, right? And you believe that? I believe that, they, I believe that the universe began to exist. And was the creator there? Sorry? The creator created We believe that, that well, Allah says, Allah says in the Quran, something very beautiful. He says, did this universe create itself? So Allah is asking you the question, where did it come from? And when you think about that and contemplate about that, it's very rational and very reasonable to assume that it must have come from something. And when we look at the universe, the laws of physics, the complexity of things, how things work, 
we can see that there's, there's a design to it. There's a law to it. There are mathematics to it. So it all points to a creator that created it. And so I think it's a very, it's a very, it's a very intuitive. Sorry. Coincidences in life never happen. I'm not saying coincidences don't happen, but what I'm trying to explain to you is that you've already accepted something has to exist by necessity because you can't have nothing, a vacuum of anything and everything, because you can't get something from that. But to get that um, necessary existence, there has to be another necessary existence to create that necessary existence. That's what I'm trying to say. And where do you get, and it, and it goes on and on and the on. Definition, the yeah. definition of a necessary existence is that it exists necessarily without something else bringing it into existence. That's the definition of what it is. So it doesn't have a cause. Yeah, it, it doesn't have a beginning. That's why it's necessary. I, I agree with you, but this is why it doesn't matter which way you slice it or dice it. You have to have something there that existed eternally. It doesn't matter what you can have the you, science can say, OK, well, I believe it was matter or it was energy or whatever it is. But you have to have that something. You can't have a scenario of an absence of everything, because then from that you can't have this universe. You can't have me and you. We can't have this conversation. Nothing exists. Nothing comes from nothing. Zero plus zero is zero. It doesn't matter how many zeros you add to that. It's still zero. So you have to have something. Now, what I'm saying to you, George, is that if you contemplate and think about what this necessary existence must have, it must have immense power. Because we see the universe, you know, with the trillions and trillions of stars, billions and hundreds of billions of galaxies, there's a lot of power and energy. So it has to be very powerful. The universe had a beginning, 13.8 billion, 20 billion, 40 billion, depending on who you follow, what you believe, right? But it had a beginning, right? So it had to have made a conscious decision to bring it into existence at that point. So power, a will, sounds, it, it sounds an awful lot like God. It still goes back to, you don't get nothing out of nothing. That necessary existence couldn't have just come out of nothing. But see, George, I think you're conflating definitions here. Conflating. I tell you why. I tell you I'm why. Not, respectfully, I'm not respectfully. I'm respecting your, uh, no, no, I'm saying. Your words I'm right. saying that when I say what I'm saying, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. If we accept that there has to be a necessary something that has always existed, okay? By definition, it doesn't have a beginning. By definition, it doesn't come from something else. That is the very definition of the necessary existence. No, it doesn't make sense. Well. It does because you're not accepting that for that necessary existence to exist. Okay. There must have been another necessary okay. existence to create. So you believe that there could there, there could be or has to be something that has preceded it. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay, so then it's not necessary anymore. What? Because it's 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 necessary on something else. So it it itself is not necessary now. It isn't a brute fact. It relies on something else, right? Yeah, but you said it's a necessary existence. No, no. But if I say necessary existence, that has certain. Uh, definitions and meanings, right? If I say necessary existence by necessity, it means that it didn't have a beginning. It, it necessarily exists. Well, it you're, doesn't. You're in a necessary existence. I'm a necessary existence. Well, not really. We are. We, we, we are. No, of course not. If my of course we are. The parents didn't get together, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, so I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the yeah? necessary. No, you're, you're, what you're conflating is necessary to possibly is important. Isn't it? Sorry. Our existence is Absolutely. Contingent. Yes. Yes. So anything that's contingent, that's a good point, anything that's contingent is assembled in a particular way, could have been assembled differently, and is reliant upon certain things for it to function or be, exist, it requires an explanation. So that necessary existence, which has always been there, yes. created the Big Bang, yes. created everything. That's what we believe. Yes. 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 And you believe that as well, yeah? I do, yeah. I don't believe that there is any other option other than conjecture. In seven days. And the, the, the classic, I in don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, the Quran mentions exactly. ayam. Yeah. The Quran mentions ayam, which is periods. Now, some translators have translated it as days, but generally the agreement is that these are periods of time, uh, not the days of the, 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 the our calendar as, as it exists, 24 hour days. It doesn't mean that. Now, so. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that anything that's contingent, reliant upon something else requires an explanation. But what you can never have is an infinite series of contingent things. 
because you can never traverse an infinite. In other words, you and I talking today means that there has to have been a finite history. Beginning. It comes back to nothing comes out of nothing, yeah? How can a necessary, a necessary existence come out of nothing? You either have to go back to mind or matter, don't you, that's there before everything else that doesn't depend on other things. And if, if you say that you know matter that created the Big Bang was just there for no reason, well, where did it come from? Exactly, that's my point. But you can have a mind that goes back to it, and we would call that mind God. And that mind exists before there was any matter. You see, George, for us Muslims... Yeah, but, that, but, yeah, but it still goes back to nothing Nothing comes out. Okay, but George, look, it's not nothing, George, 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 the point I'm trying to make to you here is this. As Muslims, we don't, I don't believe in Islam because of the argument of contingency. Or oh, I don't believe in Islam or Allah because these arguments are very good, so therefore, yeah, I believe in God. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I believe that the Quran, from my study, which people could argue is subjective, could argue is bias, right? But nevertheless, my study of the Quran, to me, convinces me, proves to me, that the explanation of its existence coming from the Creator is the only reasonable, rational, logical, evidence-backed decision that I can arrive at. And so I accept what it tells me. Allah says we created this universe from nothing. I accept that. Why do I accept that? Because Allah told me that He did this. Now, the, no, but the George, the point I'm trying to make to you here is this. What you need to verify is did Allah actually say that? But you need to verify that as well. No, well, I, I have through my study of the Quran, of Islam. And I'm convinced studying the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he claimed to be from that creator who brought revelation through Archangel Gabriel from God Almighty. And so I believe in his prophethood, peace be upon him. And it's because I'm convinced of those two things you know, the argument of contingency and all these, they're great. They're, they're, uh, you know, they're the starter in a meal. You know, you go to a nice restaurant. Not that I can afford to go to those places where they do these lovely little, you know, truffle salad, you know. In Mayfair, you pay £150 for a truffle salad, you know. But rich people, they go there, they have a truffle salad, you know. This contingency argument is the truffle salad. It says it's a starter. I'm telling you, to start digging into the roast. I'm giving you, you know, I'm giving you a, a nice steak. You know, those Japanese Wagyu five, you know, five, A5 steaks, yeah? There's so many questions. I'm me. saying, you know, me, George, get questions. tough, have there's the steak. Questions. Forget the, forget the starter. You know, like, I like the steak. Let's go for the steak. Quran, the Prophet, of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Study that. Trust the Quran Study that. the Bible, my friend. I, I, I will, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Okay? So once I do that, George, then Alhamdulillah, I have then no doubt about its origin, where it's come from. And then whatever it tells me to do, I do it happily. And rather than be enslaved to the Kardashians and buy the shampoo because she bought that shampoo, right? Or, you know, um, um, the rock because he's got big muscles and he works out, so I've got to go to the gym like Jordan you know, and build all these muscles up, right? I don't have to do that. My connection to my reality, and you asked me in the beginning, what will Islam do for me in this world and in the hereafter? Or what will it do for me as a human being? It gives you the best possible chance to have the happiest life.